Logitech has just released their first major updates to their MX range of keyboards and mice in a very, very long time. And I went out to buy these as soon as I could so I could check them out and actually decide for myself if it's worth upgrading from the previous generation MX keys and MX Master, which I have here. And I've loved these two so much that I actually own two of them. So this isn't a sponsored post, and this is probably one of the first non-sponsored reviews that will be going onto YouTube right now, given that my feed has been flooded with other creators saying positively nice things about these new products. So let's just see if what they're all saying is actually true. In terms of the new products, we have the new MX Mechanical, which comes in two different sizes, either the full layout, which I have here with the number pad on the side, or you can get the mini layout, which drops those number pad keys. Now I am still waiting for my MX Mechanical Mini to ship, so there'll hopefully be some more videos coming soon. But the full layout here is 170 bucks, and the mini is 150 bucks. Now there are also three options in terms of the switches. You've got blue for clicky, red for linear, and brown for the tactile quiet, which is the model that I've got here today. For the mouse you're looking at $100 and for that you're getting something that's pretty much the same shape and size and weight as the original MX but with of course the new upgraded features. So let's start first by talking about the new MX Mechanical and the MX Mechanical Mini when it arrives here. Now build quality wise this keyboard feels really solid it's it's hefty it's made from recycled plastic as well as aluminium and this results in a keyboard that has very very little to no flex at all really in the case itself it feels far more solid than the mx keys the original mx keys which really do flex the keys on the mx mechanical are dual purpose you have both windows and mac keys included on the uh, keyboard here and in both the keyboard and the mouse you'll also get the brand new logitech bolt receiver which we'll talk about more in just a moment now i'm not a huge pc gamer i tend to spend my time using this for more like productivity things writing out emails browsing the web researching and writing up like these videos blog posts social media and all of this from that m1 mac mini behind me with that behemoth of that 49 inch samsung g9 ultra screen but my my use of this keyboard has been a surprisingly different experience to that of using the older MX keys, mainly due to the fact that the keys on here are significantly higher than the older MX keys. And overall, it's both a good and kind of bad experience for me personally. I absolutely love the tactile feel of the keys. It feels like I've gone back in time to when I used to have those older like beige keyboards that we all used to use when we were younger. It is just a nice and pleasant experience to type on this keyboard, to feel like the clickiness of the keys, even though they're the tactile quiet version of this keyboard because well, they're still louder to use than the MX keys. In fact, I'll play a quick comparison now between the audio levels when using both of these keyboards right now. And I think this will come down to personal preference. The deeper clicks on the new MX Mechanical versus the much higher kind of clicks that almost sound like raindrops on glass on the MX keys. Now, whilst I've absolutely loved typing on this keyboard, I think it's like a really satisfying sound when doing so. It did also give me a bit of ache in my wrists after a few hours of usage, which is something I've never experienced, not experienced in a very long time on the MX keys. Now I tried it with the feet underneath extended as well as closed, but no real change there. But I'm hoping that is something that will go away over time as my hands just get used to like being in that position again, kind of facing up. Maybe ask me down in the comments down below how that ache is going and I can let you all know. Now, some key differences here, pun very much intended, between the MX keys and the new MX mechanical are that the keys are slightly different and I absolutely love this. Now on the F8 key, you have a dedicated mic mute button, which is really helpful on video calls. The F6 key is now an emoji key. The F5 is for dictation, though it doesn't trigger Siri on my Mac. There's also a newly improved smart backlighting where the keyboard lights up where you hover over your hands, which is really neat, very similar to the MX keys. And there is also some new backlighting effects, which are new to the mechanical keys and which I just like to add some kind of extra fun when using this at night. This does, however, impact your battery. As with the backlight switched off, you can get a whopping 10 months of battery life, according to Logitech. But with it switched on, you'll only get 15 days. And since most of the time that I work in this room is in daylight, I'd rather just switch the backlight off so I can you know, not forget to charge this thing for 10 whole months. There's the same toggle switches to switch between three different computers at the top, something that I use regularly between my Mac mini, my desktop PC, and my MacBook Air. All of these keys you can reprogram using the new Logi Options Plus, which I've done a small amount with. Now, since I can't change the brightness from my keyboard on the Samsung G9 monitor, I've remapped the F1 keys and two keys so that tapping one brings up the universal also fill feature in my favorite password manager, 1Password, and tapping two fires off a keyboard shortcut from my window management tool 
called Moon, which then reorganizes everything on that screen to be where I want them to be. The customizable keys are really, really neat features. I think they've done a better job getting the default switches right with this keyboard over the MX keys. Now, whilst you can still customize the older MX keys to do the same thing in terms of, you know, those F keys, they still have the wrong icons on the physical keys, which then means it's down to my very forgetful memory to remember which keys do what. The MX Master 3S is also a pretty significant upgrade to those of you who are upgrading from the original MX Master like I am. And the one thing that I immediately notice and love with this mouse is the sound that it makes, or rather lack of sound that it makes when clicking. which I guess is really counterintuitive because why make a mouse where a selling feature is that it clicks quieter when you also release a matching MX keyboard, which main selling feature is clicky keys. But they are right. The clicks are massively, massively quieter and it's hard to explain, but it just feels very soft when you do click. It's the same with the scroll wheel in terms of less noise. And there's also an improved 8K DPI, which can track mouse movement, even on glass, which is really quite scarily good when holding this mouse up to my window. With that said, you've got the same other buttons and functionality otherwise, though they have slightly moved them around. Now on the older MX, the back, forwards and the kind of scroll wheel are all side by side next to each other. Whereas on the MX Master 3 and the 3S, you have them slightly separated. So you've got the forward and back buttons first, and then above that, is the scroll wheel, so you have to move your thumb up a bit further. Now you've also got the other thumb button, which I enjoy using daily to switch between spaces on my Mac Mini, and it works just great for that. And all of those features, the scroll wheels, the pointer, you can customize all of that within the Logi Options Plus, which brings me to one of the best things of all when using the Logitech MX Mechanical, the 3S, even the older generation MX keys, is the Logi Bolt receiver and the software that sits behind this receiver. So this bolt receiver will come with every keyboard or mouse that you buy. And this device really helps for a couple of reasons. Now, firstly, if you're like me and have like a ton of devices in your workspace that are all sending out their own various like wireless signals, and you can sometimes get interference issues where like your mouse might jump around or the keyboard misses some key presses. Well, this bolt receiver will cut through that busy environment and give you a solid, like secure and reliable connection to your Mac or your devices from up to 10 meters away. Now you can pair up to six devices with each receiver and it unlocks one of the best features within the newly called Logi Options Plus. And using this software unlocks a whole ton of features and is in my opinion one of the biggest reasons why you should be getting a Logitech keyboard and mouse over any others. Now with Logi Options Plus you can completely tailor these devices to what you need and to the stage where you can have different settings on an application by application basis. This can be so powerful when you're working in specific apps for a large part of your day. Those who are using Final Cut, Logic Pro, Photoshop, even games, these are awesome to have at your fingertips. You simply add the application in Logi Options Plus and then customize the keys as you see fit. Now over onto the mouse, this gives you the ability to customize the five buttons and scroll wheels and the scroll speeds, the sensitivity, and something that I've not had access to on my last MX Master mouse is along with the bolt receiver is a feature called Flow. Now Flow lets you seamlessly move your keyboard and mouse between two different machines, regardless of their operating system. I can use it here on my overcompensatingly large ultra wide monitor to have my Windows machine up on one side and Mac on the other, but only use a single keyboard and mouse and without having to repeatedly tap the switch input keys on each device every time I want to you know, move across to the other device. And not just move your keyboard and mouse, but you can use Flow to copy and paste files between devices too. It's kind of the equivalent of universal control on Mac, but cross platform, which is incredible. So I am really, really happy now to add these daily devices into my daily workflow. And I'm definitely looking forward to when the MX Mechanical Mini turns up, just because those things are really, really difficult to get hold of right now with the recent launch. But if you do get a keyboard or mouse, let me know in the comments down below how they compare to what you're using now. And if you're interested in other productivity things, then check out this review of that monster Samsung G9 Neo screen, which I think is honestly one of the best screens that you can get right now for productivity.